Ladies and gentlemen, yes, men and women all around the world, today we have a triple monitor surround setup that we're doing, in my opinion, for a really good price. We picked up these three monitors here on a deal, just over 100 US dollars. We got this GTX 1070 Ti for just over 200 US dollars. And now we're mixing in a B350M Pro 4 motherboard, which is Ryzen 2000 series ready. And we've also got a Ryzen 5 2600, as well as a Corsair H60 water cooler 120mm. This will do an absolutely fine job of cooling this six core 12 threaded CPU. Then for memory, since memory is so important, we've got some 3200 megahertz XMP Vengeance Pro RGB memory. So not only are we are gonna have the performance, but we're also gonna have the bling. Then we've got a one terabyte hard drive for backup and also a 240 gig MP400 NVMe SSD drive from Corsair 2. And then for the case, we got the Spec 05. This is one of Corsair's sort of budget options, but it still promises to give out a good aesthetic. So with all that aside, let's build this thing and then play some World of Warcraft on it. And here we are with the triple surround setup. It is looking beautiful, especially on a budget. And then we are copying over World of Warcraft game files at the moment. We're also gonna test out Destiny 2 and see how that performs. There was a little bit of a problem trying to boot this PC up, but it's another story for another day. I guess it's just one of those really rare things that happens that I guess no one's really gonna come into. We've also got the Mark II set up, the Dark Core and the mouse pad, the MM1000 and the HS70 wireless headset. So got all the peripherals ready to go. The swag is there, but before we get these games running, I do want to get the most performance out of it since we are using the water cooler on the CPU and the memory is 3200 megahertz XMP profiles. And we're just in the BIOS now and overclocking this CPU to 4.1 gigahertz is really easy. All you have to do is hit enter and then go to manual and then type in 4100 and we'll give it about 1.39 volt. That should be pretty good. And then also in this same tab, you can change the XMP profiles or at least turn them on. And we should have 3200 megahertz memory ready to go. So just in three little tabs, we can extract so much more performance out of this PC. And we've just finished the stress test on the overclocks. 4.1 gigahertz is absolutely fine. 
on this motherboard and the temperatures are actually really good with the H60. So we're getting uh, just a little over 60 degrees, which is again, perfectly fine for a Ryzen 5 2600. So we managed to overclock the graphics card and here we've got about 144 megahertz on the core and about an extra 464 megahertz on the memory. So it's time to jump into those games. So now here's the triple display and we just finished playing World of Warcraft on this thing and it was a really incredible experience. I was surprised even in the massive battles, which at the start of this expansion, you can get into these huge battles with so many NPCs everywhere. The frame rates didn't really drop that bad. I mean, they were still hovering between 50 and 70 and this is kind of the worst case scenario in this game. We had the settings on max graphical settings on this triple surround display and a lot of times we we're getting 120 fps and the graphics card still had room to breathe so the 1070 ti is definitely suited for something like this and especially if you can pick up one for cheap it's a really good buy i was just surprised at how much fun playing world of warcraft was on this triple monitor setup And now we just finished up playing Destiny 2 and this was a really good experience just like World of Warcraft except for one thing and that is when you didn't have V-Sync turned on the game exhibited a lot of artifacting and then when we turned V-Sync on it uh, fixed it completely and it was irrelevant of whether the graphics card was overclocked at stock settings we even underclocked the graphics card and it was still prevalent so this is a weird setting with Destiny 2. Maybe it's just this configuration, I'm not too sure. But if you're gonna play Destiny 2, then you maybe have to have V-Sync on if you wish to use the three monitor surround. So we just finished up with the last of the games here and this was Project Cars 2 and it ran really well. It was so smooth, it was locked at 60 FPS but because these monitors are 60 Hertz monitors, the experience was so exciting. I mean, you can see things on the left and the right that you otherwise normally couldn't if you were on a normal 1080p single monitor or even 1440p or 4K. So the surround display does give you a little bit extra than what you're used to. But of course the two monitors on the outer sides do kind of morph out the closer you get to the outsides of the monitors. I believe they're kind of like half a monitor sort of thing in terms of their graphical setup. So if you want to get a surround setup, you will need about two times a graphical processing power, but it will be worth it. It is a very immersive experience, especially for your peripheral vision. Uh, of course, these monitors here, they do have bezels on them. So you could get some monitors with very thin bezels or even frameless monitors, and they would look even better. But for me personally, it didn't bother me. It was just such an enjoyable experience, especially when you're paying 150 Aussie dollars for three of these monitors right here. So here we are now at conclusion time with the triple surround setup and you're probably thinking is it worth it and you probably tell by the smile on my face it's a big yes especially for these used monitors here we got these for around $108 US a pop and then moving through some of the other components like the Ryzen 5 2600 that's currently going for around $165. And again, we couple that with a water cooler like the H60, you're going to get great overclocks, as well as keeping things quiet and cool at the same time. Really digging those six cores and 12 threads. 
The B350 from ASRock, that did an absolutely fine job as well, had no problems whatsoever when it came to getting things up and running. The ASRock board itself comes in currently at $87 too, so it's definitely not going to break the bank at all. The Corsair Vengeance Pro Memory looks good, performs well, comes in at around $180. That is a little bit expensive for DDR4 memory, but as you guys already know, DDR4 memory currently is very expensive and it's been like this for quite a while now. And now moving on with some of the other components, we have the CX650 from Corsair, a kind of budget option for a 650 watt power supply coming in at $62 currently. And the good thing about it is it's got all black cables as well, so it'll add to the aesthetic of the build, but also have ample power available, especially on the 12 volt line and the 1070 Ti and the Ryzen 5 6 core, even when they're both overclocked met no problems for this power supply whatsoever. For the SSD, we're using the MP300, which is currently coming in at $67 off Amazon for the 240 gigabyte solution, which is absolutely fine for a boot drive and even loading up those most played games that you constantly load up all the time. And even then we've got the backup one terabyte storage from Toshiba coming in at $45, doing a fine job for the money as well. Then lastly, with the aesthetics, we're looking at the Corsair Spec 05. It's $50, comes with a red LED fan at the front, transparent side panel. Building in this thing was a breeze. I had not one problem. Everything was so easy to do, except maybe the 8-pin CPU power cable. I did have to pre-route that before I installed the motherboard. So if you are doing a similar build in the Spec 05, then do route your uh, CPU 8-pin before you put in the motherboard. That'll save a lot of hassle if you want clean cable management. But as for peripherals, these are very subjective things. We've got claw grippers, palm grippers, fingertip grippers. It all depends what you are when it comes to a mouse, even when it comes to headphones. Do you like treble? Do you like mids? Or do you like a nice dark and warm sound? If you like a warm set of cans, then the HS70s are definitely going to give you an immersive experience. I really enjoyed what these were about. The Mark II keyboard, of course, the Strafe, that's a very solid option as well, giving you the media keys included. And then last up, that dark core mouse being the palm grippers style mouse. I do like using a bigger palm grippers mouse when it comes to World of Warcraft, but when it comes to FPS, for example, I like using a fingertip. And when it comes to editing videos, personally, I use a fingertip as grip mouse. Anyway guys, that about wraps up the triple surround setup. All the links to all the parts I used in today's build will be in the description below, even though you probably won't be able to pick up these same monitors for the price, but you can get some uh, thin bezel monitors, which will even be better than these for not too much extra. And of course the 1070 Ti brand new is actually come down in price too. So check out the links. And if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comment section below. Have you played World of Warcraft before? If so, have you played it on a triple surround monitor setup? If so, what was your experience like? If not, do you want to get on it and why? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in the next one pretty soon. Peace out for now. Bye.